this day, Sir Isaac Newton remains one of the most outstanding scientists of the world. The laws of motion, which he published in 1687, laid the foundations for continuing achievements in the physical sciences. The science of rocketry is an application of Newton's statement, by increasing the velocity of an object, we may at pleasure increase the distance to which it might be projected, until eventually it might even go around the whole earth before it falls. The man who wrote this prediction of artificial earth satellites was born on Christmas Day, 1642, in the modest country house of Woolersthorpe Manor. During his early years at this school, young Newton was considered rather a dull pupil. Many of his biographers believe that this incident, a schoolboy fight, made a lasting impression on the shy and withdrawn Newton. For suddenly this boy turned on his adversary and won the fight. Newton's victory brought him a new self-confidence. Within a few months after the incident, his work showed a remarkable improvement. Good marks and hard work brought Newton a scholarship at Trinity College, Cambridge. During his student years, he spent most of his time in his room reading. He had become interested in the sciences. Drawing from the heritage of great scientists and mathematicians, he read works by Euclid, the ancient Greek mathematician. By Johann Kepler, the German astronomer by René Descartes, the French philosopher and mathematician, and by Christian Huygens, the Dutch physicist. Newton might have remained an undistinguished scholar if it had not been for the guidance of a brilliant teacher. His name was Isaac Barrow. This professor of mathematics recognized that his young pupil was a natural mathematician and scientist. Professor Barrow set his pupil on the path of mathematical investigations, which he hoped would lead Newton to great achievements. Isaac Barrow had encouraged his pupil to think about the theories of mathematics. Partly due to a strange series of events, Newton was indeed to carry on what his teacher had begun. By 1665, Newton had become a young teacher at Trinity College, Cambridge. One day he received horrible news. The bubonic plague had broken out in England once again. Many had already died of it in London, and as a safety measure, Trinity College was to be closed. Teachers and students alike were to return to their homes. So in the autumn of 1665, Isaac Newton returned to his home at Woolersthorpe. There he remained for 18 months, and this period in Newton's life was to become one of the most important in the history of science. In this quiet country house, he found the leisure to come to grips with several basic scientific problems. Here he was to work out the solutions to four major problems, solutions which were to usher in a new age of physics and mathematics. The first problem had already been known in part to earlier mathematicians. It concerned binomial expressions. Earlier mathematicians had known how to raise a binomial expression to the second or any power as long as positive whole numbers were involved. But how should one go about computing a binomial raised to a fractional power? For example, five halves. assuming n to be any exponent, a whole number, or a fraction. Newton grasped the basic relationship between exponents and coefficients. Thus, he created the binomial theorem, a fundamental principle of algebra. Using Newton's theorem or formula, a sum of any two variables can be raised to any power, whether fractional or whole, whether positive or negative. 
These are Newton's original notes for the binomial theorem. It was the first of his four great achievements at Woolisthorpe. In November 1665, Newton was completing work on the second problem, which had its origins in geometry. Ancient geometricians knew that the tangent to a circle lay at right angles to the radius. But in general, it was not known how to find the tangents to other kinds of curves, those without a radius. In working out the method for finding the tangent to any curve, Newton laid the foundations of a new branch of mathematics. The differential calculus. Even more important, Newton found that by inverting the procedure used to find the tangent to a curve, he could calculate the area of a curvilinear figure. This discovery came to form the basis of a related branch of mathematics, the integral calculus. The calculus, which alone made possible the amazing advance of mathematics and physics, was formulated by Newton in one single stroke of genius. In January 1666, he turned to a third problem. The problem was one of physics, the nature of light. In a series of experiments, Newton used a circular beam of sunlight and a glass prism. Newton allowed the light beam to pass through the prism onto some white parchment. But the circular beam of light now appeared oval in shape. Also, it was no longer white, but a spectrum of color. This could mean only one thing. Some of the light rays passing through the prism had been bent more than others. The prism acted as a sorting device. It dispersed light rays into their various color components. Thus, the experiment proved that what we see as white light is really a mixture of colors. Astronomy, too, fascinated the youthful genius. He was making a new kind of telescopic instrument, one which contained a highly polished reflecting surface. But he did not complete his telescope at Woolisthorpe. A famous account tells us that in 1666, the fall of an apple started Newton on the way to his fourth and perhaps his greatest achievement. Newton knew that the apple was attracted to the Earth by gravity, a force already known to earlier scientists. But the question which now occurred to him was, how far did the force of gravity extend? Newton recalled that Galileo, another scientist, was reported to have dropped weights from the Tower of Pisa during his experiments with falling objects. Well then, thought Newton, if the force of gravity extends to the tops of trees and tall buildings, might not that same force extend into outer space? To the moon to the planets. The nature of gravity continued to puzzle Newton. Even at night, he would suddenly wake up and remember it. Could it be that this force, this gravity, actually kept the moon in orbit around the Earth? It must be true. Newton grappled with this revolutionary theory, sometimes working all through the night until dawn. And at last, through mathematical proof, he was able to show in these original notes that gravity not only keeps the moon in orbit around the Earth, but it also keeps the planets in their timeless orbits around the sun. Although Newton did not publish his new theory until many years later, we now know that he had already formulated at that time the famous law of gravity, or gravitation. And so, during his 18 months at Woolisthorpe, Newton had perfected the binomial theorem, the differential and integral calculus, his theory of light and spectrum analysis, and the law of gravity.
But now the fruitful months at Woolersthorpe were ended. The plague was over and Newton returned to Trinity College in Cambridge. In addition to teaching there, however, Newton continued his scientific research and experiments. He resumed work on his reflecting telescope. This is Newton's actual telescope, which gave a clearer view of the astral bodies than any ever seen before that time. Its inventor submitted it to the Royal Society, a body of distinguished men dedicated to the furthering of the sciences. The telescope was found to be such an improvement on previous instruments that the members of the Royal Society elected Newton as a new member in 1671. Seven years later, Edmund Halley, the astronomer, was also elected to the Royal Society. Halley became familiar with some of Newton's earlier work, and in 1684 he visited Newton to ask the mathematician's opinion on the shape of planetary orbits. The astronomer had already guessed how gravity functioned within the solar system. But why were the orbits of the planets elliptical in shape? That was the problem. Newton had the answer. Mathematical proof that an ellipse must be the path followed by any planet. But why was Newton so sure? Well, he had calculated it many years before, after seeing an apple fall from a tree. Then he must calculate it again and write down all his mathematical calculations. Thus, encouraged by Halley, Newton wrote and published his book the Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. Originally printed in Latin in 1687, it is the most far-reaching and influential of all his works. In its pages, Newton set forth many of the fundamental principles of modern physics, including his famous laws of motion. Every object perseveres in its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line, unless it is compelled to change that state by force impressed upon it. The force required to accelerate an object is proportional to the mass of the object and the acceleration given to it. To every action there is always opposed an equal reaction. Building on this heritage and other contributions of great men of science, our modern age is able to forge ahead to explore ever new vistas of the universe. Thank you.